Hello everyone and welcome to another Dark Table from A to Z series bonus edition. My name is Hal and today we're going to be looking at the new features in Dark Table 4.8. Let's get into it now. I haven't read those, I wasn't keeping up, so it's going to be as much a surprise to me as it is to you. I do have one feature in mind that I hope that they would improve. I don't think it's part of that. It's the uh, HDR capabilities. Uh, but let's have a look and see what the this summer gift has brought us. Right. Darktable 4.8.0 is released. We're proud to announce the new feature release of Darktable 4.8.0. There is a link of where to download it if you want to download it or wait for your distribution to have a have a release if you're on Linux or however you usually do it. Right, uh, when updating please bear in mind that your edits will be preserved during this process but the new library and configuration will lo longer be usable with 4.6 so you cannot downgrade if you don't like it. As usual, do a backup first. Right, some statistics, interesting. Oh, there we go. Now we get to the uh, heart of the matter, the big ones. The following is a summary of the main features added to Darktable 4.8. Please see the user manual for more details of the individual changes. Where available. Introduce the color equalizer module to control hue lightness saturation based on colors. This is a partial scene referred replacement for the legacy's color zone module. Interesting. I don't know what partial means, but I've been looking forward to a scene referred replacement for the color zones module. Don't use it often, but sometimes it's very nice to be able to play around with colors. I know we already now have the, uh, um, what was it called? RGB primaries but to be able to work with the hue lightness saturation and very uh, uh, say uh, color zones module it could be quite interesting I'm not sure what partial is but I'm looking forward to testing this I'm pretty sure uh, in the uh, module description in the user manual they will mention why it's partial two new modules have been introduced to support image composition in large canvas as the name implies this module can be used to add areas to the left right top and bottom of the image interesting the new area can be assigned a different color to help make masking if necessary the new areas can be filled with the retouch module by copying some other part of the image using liquify if the area is small or the new module overlay oh that's very interesting i usually do that i have to, if i feel like doing that then i'll have to do it in another app of course so it's it's interesting to see how it would work directly and how is that all added still in the meta file? Wow. Overlay. This module can be used to add new content on the image by overlaying pixels from the current image or another image. Ooh, nice. The overlay content is defined by a drag and drop from the film strip to the overlay module. This new content can be scaled, rotated, and shifted horizontally or vertically. Nice. Using a mask, it can be used to fill an area created by the enlarged canvas or to add uh, some new part to the image using masking. A common example is to overlay multiple pictures of a firework to create a bigger one. Wow, this is very powerful. This is really nice. Really, really nice. Especially combined with masking, you can do all kinds of things. All kinds of things right you can even do manual hdr actually if you want it so <laughs> you can replace the sky this is very nice very nice indeed okay implemented a toggle switch for the darkroom module forcing the pixel pipe processing to use the whole image data instead of just the area displayed okay this allows the user to inspect processed data without errors introduced via internal scaling and equals what we get by exporting in high quality resampling mode. 
Uh, okay, pixel pipe processing to use the whole image data instead of just the area displayed. This allows the user to inspect processed data without errors introduced via internal scaling. Okay. So this is just when you're checking the output either in the uh, top left corner, uh, the um, small, uh, say, sample, or if you're zooming in, in the main screen, I think. I don't, can't say that I've noticed problems with that before, but I'm sure that they were there. Right. That's it for the big ones, but it is a huge one. This one is really amazing. So not only you can enlarge the canvas, so add things to the photos if you want, which can actually help you make panoramas if you want. Uh, it's going to be difficult though because of perspective and so and that these kind of things. But as well, then you can use the overlay to fill these either from the same photo, different photos of the same shoot or completely other photos. This is going to be very, very interesting. I'm really, really looking forward to testing this. Right, so let's move on. The per performance improvements. Rewrote the clustering code and map view for dramatically faster performance on large coll coll collections. Mapping should now be used with more than 1 million geotagged images selected. Okay. That's great. Very nice. I don't think I have one million geotagged images, to be honest. But uh, any faster performance uh, is always useful. Uh, the map view is quite useful. Um, I think we we did a an A to Z uh, video on that, or at least it was part of another one. If there is a need to go more into the uh, map view, let me know. Um, I'd be glad to do one again. But it's quite nice because if you are trying to go back and see photos of a certain place where you were, then it's much easier to find it on the map than to try to go and find it in your um, database or collection. Of course, if you are diligent and you tagged properly, then you can search with the tag as well. But yeah, all right, uh, I think most people are like me and tagging is optional. Right, other changes. Change the sort order of tags to a natural and case insensitive order. Okay, good. Added Apple Keychain password storage backend for Mac OS devices. I'm sure that's a welcome change for Mac users. Collect module sorting has been integrated into the modules header instead of a preference. All collection can now be sorted easily by a single click on the sort button. Ah, oh, then that, that's great. Okay, ah, oh, that that's actually quite good and does help in finding things as well. Okay, removed unrestricted mode from Darktable's preferences resources for safety. The setting has been proved to be unsafe in many cases. It can still be enabled via the resource file if needed. I've never used it, so I have no idea what was so unsafe about it, but f fine. Added buttons next to the snapshots to allow restoring it as the new history. Ah, oh, that's nice. That's really nice. Also, the snapshots are now supporting drone masks. It's possible to visualize the difference between the main darkroom view and a snapshot with different masking, for example. Wow. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's that, that they didn't make it into the big ones, but I think this is quite nice to be able to go back to a snapshot and just say restore it as the new history if you didn't like what you added or if you deleted it by mistake or whatever is great and being able to visualize them with masking can be can be useful in uh, in some cases using right click on color label icons bottom toolbar of light table okay it is possible to add a description to color labels Okay. Yes, this is really good too. Ah, this is quite good. I wonder if you could do it. Uh, I think this is generic, right? It's for all, uh, all of your collection. It can't be per folder or something like that. But still, it's very good. It's per. 
it's a, a very a good step in the right direction. It, it's very difficult to keep track of what you use. Of course, if you use the color labels often, then great. But I tend to use them every now and again, and I'm sure that between my between one folder and the other, I've used the colors differently for different reasons. It would be good to be able to change uh, or assign a label to them. Remove the AI options in color calibration module because of mediocre quality. Okay. Uh, yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah, probably not a bad idea, even though sometimes it was okay, but it did uh, have problems. Okay. I wonder if they intend to improve them and put them back, or that's it, we we'll we'll have to do without them now. It is now possible to import images and place in a GVF mount on new Linux. Okay. Um, what's a GVF's mount? GVF's mount? I don't know, but okay. Added a dashed outline uh, of the current selected area and the print view. That's good. Added a few more EXIF fields to the image information module, white balance, exposure program, flash and metering modes. These get filled automatically for new imports. For existing photos, please perform a refresh EXIF on the selective images. Okay, that's handy if you need to see those in your final images. I can't say that, I, that I've ever missed them, but good. Added Windows Credential Manager Password Storage Backend as well. Okay. Are there a lot of use for password protecting your dark table within the Windows? Those people use it on a shared uh, computer or something? But fine, it's there. Added mask blending to the highlights reconstruction module. The generated raster mask holds the amount of reconstructed data and can be used with all algorithms. Ooh. Ah, that is nice. That to generate a raster mask. Is it generated automatically, or do we do we have to select it? I don't know. This is to be tested, but it is good because I can see where you you would want maybe to um, either ex uh, exclude the highlights, recon the reconstructed highlights in some uh, modules, or you would want to maybe use a module just to enhance them. That's actually quite good. Color picker positions are defined by image coordinates instead of output. They will stay at the same location, whatever distorting modules are used. Okay. Um, right. So, how are they now? If they will stay at the same location. Oh, I see. Okay. Right. But would that not change the color of the picker then? Because if I say say liquefy it and then li the image and move something and all of a sudden it's not on the say the object but on the background then the color picked by the color picker will change. Well, to be tested, the history auto saving might be disabled because of slow drives. This is now done per image instead of globally. Okay, that's good. Very good. I again, I don't think I. Uh, I I really like the auto saving. I have to say, I haven't had problems with uh, dark table crashing in a long, long time. But auto saving is a lifesaver, time saver in any case. So I'm not sure I'll be disabling that. Added support for DNG files requiring the. Cam camera calibration tags for correct white balancing. Some Google Pixel cameras, for example, requires rereading EXIF metadata. Okay. Improves efficiency of the quick access panel by allowing modules to be reset and presets to be applied without opening the full module. Added more controls by default for f to further reduce the need to leave the panel while editing. Nice. We'll have to see how that works, though. Added more collection types and filters for flash, white balance, exposure program, 
metering mode and image grouping collection types okay nice uh, again I'm not sure I do f use the filters to do that but now that it's there it could kind of be it could be useful if you have a a session where you used flash and for some photos and flash for uh, no flash for others that would be great white balance I don't play around with it in the camera so maybe not but the others could be very interesting Remove the old image grouping collection type and filter, which gave confusing results. I agree. Good. Added support for CMYK profiled histogram. Okay. The map view can now be scrolled with the arrow keys. <laughs> okay. In small steps. And with control in bigger steps. That's actually not bad. It's, it's good. Especially if you don't have a fine-tuned mouse. Right. Uh, we're just gonna peruse the bug fixes quickly to see if there is one that uh, at least was affecting me uh, of course there'll be a link to this in the description below feel free to go through them yourself as well uh, don't think I've noticed any of those no well, I mean, it's great, of course, but uh, I don't think I particularly know of any of those that affected me. A new API version of Lua. Still didn't do a video on that. It's not going to be one video. It would be a lot, but not a lot of you uh, expressed interest in it. If there is interest, then please let me know. I will work on it, but uh, I'm reluctant to put all that effort if it's uh, really not interesting. Okay, notes, exporting with upscaling and without using the high quality option will result in corrupt images. Okay, no, I never upscale, but it's good to know. When exporting to these file types, selecting specific metadata, metadata e.g. geotag or creator is not currently possible. For these, Darktable will not include any metadata fields, fields unless the user selects all of the checkboxes in the export modules preference options okay it's good to know I don't use these but it's good to know and release 4.8 drops support for Mac OS versions older than 13.5 right the I'll leave those to the um, <laughs> Linux supporters uh, fine I usually wait until there is a release uh, from my uh, say Linux distribution so that's fine raw speed Fujifilm nice if you have a Fujifilm uh, camera support right well it's great if you have any of the new ones mine is already supported i actually wait to upgrade the full my camera <laughs> until it's actually supported i did really did this time especially that with the new uh, raw format for canon that i waited way longer than i usually do okay white balance presets are added more n noise profiles right that's it very good I'm really looking forward to testing some of those I'm pretty sure I'll be testing these but let me know what you're looking for and let me know where would you like me to start and how if you have any ideas about how to test the overlay then um, I'll be happy to hear about it all right that's gonna be it for this video this was the whole rundown of the all the new features in uh, version 4.8. I hope that you liked it and if you did please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.